we're going to make decrees. If he said, Scott prayed it today, he said it, kingdom come. I assume most of you here know in, the, in Greek that is, not a, that is not a petition. That is absolutely a command in Greek. Jesus said, pray this way, kingdom, that's not a thousand year reign, okay? That's not what he was talking about. The word means the domain of a king. He was saying, ask for the dominion, command my kingly rule, reign, what I do, do at the, did at the cross, set people free, command that into the earth, command my will to be done here as it is there. We are commanders. We are those who command the will of the king into the earth. Now, if you... you if we're not commanding this way, we shouldn't be commanding. Because I don't command him. I command for him. I bind for him. I open and close for him. I am kingly, I am a royal, part of a royal priesthood, an expression of the king in the earth. He extends his scepter from me, from us, Psalm 110. We are those who carry his name. We have his authority. He wants us to decree for him. Bind, loose, set captives free. Cast out demons. Pull down strongholds. Half the church, most of the church still just kids. Go to church every Sunday, you don't know anything about sonship, just, want to, just be a child. Give me some more blessings, daddy. I'm a dare, you said, I, you're my provider, you said, give me this, give me this, give me this, give me this. And the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit are in heaven say, when are you going to grow up and be a son? Amen. This is about more than your rights, this is about your responsibility as a citizen of the kingdom. Yeah, we're priestly. We've been priestly all morning. We worship. We petition. We loved on God. We loved on one another. We represent the needs of people this way. But there comes a time when you're hanging out with Him. When there are times when He just says, you know what? While you're here loving on me, being my kid, I need you to deal with something for me. It's simple as that. I need, you, you, I need you to release my authority over here. See, some of you are praying for prodigals. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now what to do with the lying spirit that's telling you it's not going to happen. Tell the lying spirit to go back to hell. Quote scripture to him that God says you believe on the Lord and you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be saved and your household. And that 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5 says you have weapons powerful enough to destroy every stronghold of darkness holding them back. And you're going to do it in Jesus' name and they will be saved. And nothing can stop it. Now you tell the devil, nothing can stop it. Shout from your cave and tell the devil, you can't have my kids. And I don't care what they're doing. And there's no exception in there, but if they're controlled by this spirit, I don't know if I can handle that. There's, that's no place in the Bible where it, where it gives disclaimers about it and says, well, I can't deal with that stronghold. It, well, there is a verse though that says the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and unrighteousness. So you're going to start shouting from your bedroom cave or whatever, wherever you pray or hang out with God, and you're going to start shouting at the enemy, and you're going to say, I'm not a misfit, and I'm not in distress, and I'm not down and out, and I'm not discouraged, but I am a child of the Most High, and I am a son, and I do have authority, and I am telling you, you will give them up. They will not go to hell.
Saul is going to die. David is going to make it to the throne. And the misfits are going to become the greatest army on planet earth. That's a picture of us. And I get just a little irritated with the Christians that believe the devil's stronger and smarter than God. I get just a little irritated with those that think Satan has outsmarted the de- uh, God. And that his demons are more powerful than angels and Holy Spirit. And if your Bible, including your eschatology, allows God to lose, you need to get a different Bible and a different theology. Well, I suppose I thought the Bible says that things are going to get evil's going to abound. Yeah, it does say evil's going to abound, and it says grace is going to much more abound. He said, "Well, the devil's doing this and going crazy over here. God's going to be over here, and He's going to be active doing what He does." And the Bible says our kingdom is not a shrinking kingdom. God's Jesus Christ's kingdom is not a shrinking kingdom. His kingdom is an ever increasing kingdom, which will never pass away. It will never shrink. It will never back up. It will never die. It will never end. It'll be bigger tomorrow than it is today. It'll be bigger next week than it is last week. And the government of the earth... It's not on the shoulders, ultimately, of earthly kings. Because they tried to pull that in Psalm 2. When the kings of the earth took counsel together and basically said to God, your son's not going to rule over us. And that's happening all over the place now. It happens down through history. But it's happening all over the place. It happens every day in Washington. Demonized people get together around boardrooms and decide what they're going to do to offset this. And say to Yahweh, your son's not going to rule. You're in the cave. I'm in charge. You see? You see? I'm not asking if you see. I'm telling you what they say. That's what they say to him. We're in charge of your schools. We're grooming your kids. That's what they say. You are not going to rule over us. And you know what God's response was, right? He gave them some instructions, but the first thing he did was laugh. I suppose... That may have very well, very well have been one of the most frightening sounds in all of history. When God mocks you with a laugh. And then he just makes an announcement. This is my son. And I've given him the nations. And you have two choices. You either worship him. Kiss him. It's it's a sign of worship. You either kiss him or you're going to experience the rod of my authority and correction and judgment. You have no, no, there is no middle ground. You only have two choices. I say to those in Washington, D.C. now that oppose him, I say to those who mock him with their laws, I say to those who mock this and think they can redefine marriage and all the other crazy things they do, I say to you, you have two choices. You either bow and kiss the sun or you're going to experience his rod of judgment. 